Hello guys and welcome back to another series of interviews and they just keep popping because we have so many tournaments and so many winners and today we have someone that I wanted to have for so long here. <laughs> Too many top cuts, so few number ones. It's none other than what am I? Hey Jordan, how are you doing? Hey, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it was it was starting to get almost depressing. Like I should feel good about all the top cuts, but I was there was a lot of almost in there. <laughs> it was always that um, feeling that ah uh, maybe try again. It, there was actually an opponent that was called maybe next yeah, time. His name was that. It's hilarious. Like the 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 feeling is maybe next time, but the guy who got second to this tournament is named maybe next time. So. <laughs> Uh, maybe you should change your name as well to maybe next time on... Actually, with Lorga, you can change your name in in a bunch of ways. But let's not talk about that and let's talk about... Oh, no. Let's talk about the performance. Let's not uh, talk about ZZ, what am I ZZ? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, first of all, what did you bring in the Swiss rounds? Did you bring the similar decks or did you bring something different? That's my curiosity. So in the Swiss rounds, I brought three completely different decks. I so th this is actually a hilarious thing. So I was streaming the Swiss rounds, uh, but I actually went. I uh, I, w I almost worried I was going to lose the Swiss rounds. Um, so I my three decks were Go Hard Kindred, uh, Talia Aphelios, and then um, Trundle Ladros Control. That was what I brought to Swiss. Um, and it was a, it was definitely an eclectic set of decks. I was trying to target aggro, and there was no aggro around for me to target. So I, I kind of just barely squeaked out of Swiss into Top Cut. And for those of you who are watching, they also know that you are trying to target yourself with those draws. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. So the TLC list that I run when I was running that deck, I effectively run five Ladros, because I run three Ladros and two Bjerg that can only hit Ladros. And despite that, the amount of games where I'll go like 20, 22, 23 cards into my deck and not be able to hit that win condition is very, very impressive, if I do say so myself. All right, but now let's talk about the good line, the one that actually performed, and <coughs> let's see... Uh, yeah. Let's see, after we go through the decks, why did you actually feel the change? Because the first one is Golden Fiora. We, uh, you know what name runs around with this. It, you know what turtle names this. It's Aegis or TK <laughs> in this case. Uh, Fiora Shen seems bricky most of the time, so why choose Fiora Shen? So, Fiora Shen does have those hands where, as we like to say, it bricks hard enough to build a fucking house. Um, but when it doesn't, it's a really, really powerful deck. And also, just to add a little bit of consistency, you'll see my, my kind of one-of tech choices are the one-of Protégé and the one-of Chevalier. Um, and those those help your brick percentages a reasonable amount, because instead of uh, mulliganing to six three-drops that you need to pillar on, you're mulliganing to seven, which is actually a big deal. And the same with four-drops. Um, instead, of, instead of having just Shen, you also have Chevalier to help out. And Chevalier is kind of like... Half a third, half a fourth River Shaper, half a fourth Fiora, and he kind of just goes back and forth. So the, those one drops were kind of my leaning toward trying to brick a little bit less. And also, when it doesn't brick, it's honestly one of the most powerful decks in the format. And the first question, because probably people that are watching this list have a burning question: Where the hell is Bristol Formation? So I was talking with Peps about this, um, and Peps, Peps Cola is my go-to guy for tech on Fiora Shen and for how to play Fiora Shen, because he's an amazing player. And what we realized is at this point in the metagame, literally the only deck that Bright Steel Formation is good against is the Mirror. And it was always a Mirror Breaker, but it used to be there were enough like solidly mid-rangey decks that you had some other useful applications for it. At this point, as far as the top decks go, it's basically only ever going to be good against the Mirror, and maybe every once in a long while it'll be okay against the Targon deck. Uh, but most of the time, that's going to be a dead card, and that slot just lets you have the third Cythria, which is so powerful in this triple rally version of the deck. Right, and people are kind of torn apart between Golden Ages, how many copies should you go, why, why are you running free? Where is that much confidence in Golden Ages? Well, Golden Ages is this entire deck. Um, like, I think the only game that I dropped on Fiora 
Uh, and when I was playing this in Fight Night last night, the not getting to the finals of Fight Night were literally just the games that I couldn't draw Golden Ages. Um, it just, it creates so much tempo, it creates so much pressure, it can kill with Fiora, it can level your Shen, it can cause your Sithria to murder people, it's... There is no better card for Fiora Shen than that, and anyone who's not running three is doing it wrong, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> well, we had Z-Turtle being a Golden Ages uh, seller, we had Garrett being a uh, Golden Ages seller, and now it's you who is a Golden Ages seller, so if three people make that not only the top cut if you three people win the tournament with three golden ages in their decks maybe you would like to introduce it in your deck <laughs> just maybe <laughs> all right but let's move forward to another deck that you have brought it's the moon ninja it's a furiously seen and this is not something you traditionally see because you see Lee Sin paired with zoe so why a Phileas? Um, so this is this is one that I've talked about uh, a lot on my stream, um, and that I, I actually really firmly stand behind this one. Zoe is great, and what Zoe does is she basically she forces your opponent to trade a little bit of negative tempo, um, and she threatens to accidentally win the game if they can't remove her. But the thing she does is she's actually really easy to remove, and it's hard to delay her because you always want to try to get the value. Um, she also won't win the game on her own a lot of the time. Uh, the reason I like Aphelios is because this version, first of all, it's much better against aggro. Uh, again, if you're playing the Zoe version, basically your only hope against a really all-in aggro deck is either double draw your eyes of the dragon, uh, or get a mentor on a sparkle fly. Um, with this version, you're literally running eight eyes of the dragon. Your average draw will have two eye of the dragon, which makes aggro decks absolutely cry. There is so much life in in this deck. Um, and also, Aphelios can just win the game on his own. Um, I've had a bunch of games, in fact, probably at least half, where Lee Sin will you know, either not be there at all or just show up at the very end when Aphelios has already won the game. If you're playing against something that isn't a super late game control deck, then you get an Aphelios running and you just buff him up. He does fine. Doesn't need help. You mentioned when Lee Sin shows up, and I remember the comment in chat when you didn't draw Lee Sin for the most part of the game, and in, for the final push you drew it, and someone commented in chat, an ally has reconnected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is perfect. <laughs> like, Aphelios just hanging out, hard carrying the game, Lee Sin's like, oh yeah, I'm here, man, I got this, I'm here! <laughs> uh... Back a bit to the deck, the other que uh, the other thing that people might notice that is different from usual lists is that there is no palm here. What is the reasoning behind not running any palm at all? So palm is the other Lee Sin's kind of tech against aggro and a little bit against mid-range. It's how you help those matchups out so you don't get, you know, murdered by the overwhelm decks, or you can do a little bit against Draven Draven Jinx or Draven Azir. And honestly, it's just kind of a clunky card, and it's always been in the deck because we've had to, not because we really want it. And this deck just doesn't need it anymore. You have five one-drops between Dustbringer and Sketcher. You're running, as I said, eight Eyes of the Dragon, and you, and you even have Fangs for more healing. Like, we, we finally have an excuse to get rid of that card, and we snap-take it. How about two Zenith Blade instead of the traditional three? Did you feel like it's too bricky to run three, and you cut to two? So Zenith Blade is a really, really tough card, because you always want it with your Lee Sin, and you'll sometimes want it with your Aphelios when you're trying to win the game. Um, but the reason we can get it down to two is because, first of all, you never want to draw two copies, right? Because you always want your Zenith Blade to draw your next Zenith Blade. Um, so we can get it down to two to make that happen much less. And the reason why we're allowed to is because our three Aphelios and our two Gifts from Beyond can also create an Overwhelm. So we don't always need to be on Zenith Blade to OTK with Lee Sin. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's, it, besides that, the list is usually the same, but there is one Nopify. Did you consider to go to more than one Nopify to help some matchups in that regard? Yeah, that one's that one's definitely a meta call. Um, it, 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 it all depends on what you expect to face, and I was expecting a lot of matron lists, so I really wanted my three denies. If you're expecting more of the, you know, mid-range decks with Mystic Shots or a lot of TF Fizz, then feel feel free to cut a Deny for an Opify. The other reason that I don't have this two Opifies in there is because I'm planning to ban TF Fizz with this lineup. 
Like, I, I'm planning to never have to play against TFIs with this deck, and that's where Nova Fi shines the most. So I'm kind of okay having it only as a one of. And it's there, more than anything, hopefully, to stop things like single combat or burn points at our face. Not to mention that all the players advise you, kindly advise you, if you're seeing in your opponent's lineup a TFIs and you plan on countering it, or even planning to counter it before the tournament, just calm the hell down. Consider banning it. It's better for both players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a bunch of games during my run, uh, and it wasn't every game, but it was most of them, where you'd have both people show up with TFIs, and just like, you know what? We have a gentleman's agreement. We're going to both ban TFIs. We're going to play some interesting, interactive games. It's going to go away. It's going to be great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but speaking of the devil, the last yeah. one, the last one is TFIs, which is probably yep. going to be gone in two more weeks. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, did you get to actually play it, or did you get it banned most of the time? Uh, I actually played it twice uh, in the run through the top 32, because there were a couple of people who were running lists that were trying to target it, um, and it won both times I played it anyway. Um, I think TF is just an absolutely busted deck, uh, and I teched in the third suit up and the second mind meld specifically against the matron decks because you're just going to be able to go through their mass removal, and a lot of those decks are on one or even zero ruination, so it's really easy for Mind Meld to just completely win you the game, even when they think they've got the win, when they think they've stopped you. Um, this deck is absolutely busted. This is nothing new to anybody who plays this game at all. Um, it's, it's either a must-ban, or you have to be... Like, the only thing that scared me, basically, in the entire tournament that I was really, really scared of, was my opponent, uh, I think it was in the top four, was Black Boss, who showed up with a triple aggro lineup that had a chance to just burn me out through the TFIs before I could get going. And I, I basically not drew him. Because sometimes TFIs just kills you on turn six, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you mentioned that you added in one more suit up to go to free and one more my melt to have a better late win condition, but if that wasn't a meta call into the matron list, what would you replace the two cards with? Um, I re I re normally really like... I, I stand by two mind meld in basically any meta. Um, I think that the second mind meld is a really big deal, and I, I talk about this the same way I used to talk about Ladros and Gohard. Uh, people would play one Ladros, and because Gohard drew you know, 20, 25 cards a game, they would have a reasonably good chance of hitting it. Right? But if you play two Ladros and you're drawing 20 or 25 cards a game, you're really, really likely to hit it. And you often really wanted that Ladros to win the game with. And I feel the same way about Mind Meld, especially into Targon decks, which is what I want this deck to be very good against almost the most. Um, having that second Mind Meld is a big deal because you're almost always going to hit it. And also, if you draw it early or you draw two, you have so much discard in this deck. You have Poro Cannon, you have Rummage, you have Get, Ex you have Get Excited, you have Pick a Card. Like... It's, it's not a big deal to have a dead card in your hand to get rid of. So I stand behind the two mind melds. Um, the three suit-ups, um, I would definitely cut one suit-up. I might even consider cutting a zap and putting in two cyanide urchins, just to get the deck a little bit more consistency. I have seen people that were trying to go for the Defray MK1 deck, so they are a little bit better into aggro and they are a little bit better into the mirror. What do you think about mm -hmm. that inclusion? Um, I don't mind it. Um, I think if I'm playing, and this, this is more to my philosophy as a lineup builder, I really like to polarize my decks. Um, I am, I am not inclined to tech in the direction of aggro unless my deck is supposed to be good against aggro anyway. And TF is, most of the time, if you're beating an aggro deck, it's because you killed them on turn 6. Or you leveled Twisted Fate on turn 5 and you completely shut them down. And I don't think adding the Death Rays gives you enough percentage points for how bad that card is in matches like Targon and uh, Trundle Matron Control. And so I'd rather, I'd rather stay polarized in most cases. All right, I so, don't mind the choice, it's just not one that I choose to make. So basically, Majin Bay didn't convince you? <laughs> mm, nope. <laughs> All right, we need to work harder on that then. Uh, it's, truly, it's truly better than you would think, especially when you draw it. And sometimes you can even get it from Burblefish. And it's like a card that you never see play, but if you get it, you are offered the opportunity. You can kill some units or enable some trades. Or just get this card further at the very least.
Uh, yeah, but- again, I don't. I don't think it's bad. I think it's a really good tech choice against an aggro heavy metagame. But if I was going to play against an aggro heavy metagame, I probably just wouldn't play TFS. I just play three aggro stomper decks. All right, and something very important because we have gone through your Swiss lineup. We have gone through your actual lineup that won you the tournament. So what changed? What happened from Swiss to Top Cut that made you decide to go against your first lineup and switch? Um, so honestly, my first lineup, I got a little bit lucky to make it out of Swiss at all. Um, and I, I felt it was a bad metagame call, honestly. Like, I think I played fine. I drew a little bit under under average, but I play. I think I played pretty well during the Swiss, and I I barely got out uh, to get into top cut, and that was because I made a bad metagame call. I effectively brought three decks that were going to be very good against, I expected, basically a field full of aggro, because everyone would want to target TF Fizz, and people just all showed up with the new, new mid-range nonsense that they wanted to try. And that's cool! I think that's great! That was a bad metagame call on my part, and I assumed that the metagame would be relatively similar to what it was, so I wanted to do uh, do a hard shift to target a different metagame that I expected, and I expected a lot of uh, Trundle Trundle Matron. Uh, this victory, while it's sweet, is mostly bittersweet because usually, from what you told us, you you don't try to go with the flow. You usually try to go against the waves and come with your counter meta. So, yeah, yeah. I uh, t- to be fair, I did not bring uh, Trundle Matron. Uh, which was what I expected to be the biggest meta deck. But I definitely, when I talk about pillars of the metagame, I tend to talk about five pillars of the metagame, and I will admit that I just decided to bring three of them. I just brought the best decks and decided I would just try to play better than my opponents today. And sometimes sometimes that's just what you have to do. And the issue that I do see here, I do not know if you are looking at it this way, but the decks that are the pillars as you name them are the same as past metas all over again. Like last meta, what was very popular, Shen Fiora, Twisted Fate Fizz, and a bunch of Lil nonsense. And this meta is kind of the same. Plus minus some Fielder Rush that converted to the Lissandra Trundle OTK. <laughs> yeah, so I'm... This is part of why I'm such a big uh, proponent, I suppose, or maybe hoper, because I don't really have any influence in this direction, that there will be uh, lots of changes uh, to both TF Fizz and maybe the metagame as a whole. Um, and also, you know, just more frequent balance patches would be great. Um, it is uh, it is definitely not a particularly changed meta from last season, despite the introduction of Shreema. Yeah, Shurima seems like it's lacking in the power level. I think I have seen in one Discord, Shurima is fine, but it needs more than five good cards in order to be actually good. I mean, we've got Ruin Runner, we've got uh, Pact of Negation, we've got Dune Keeper, we've got... No, I'm done. <laughs> Alright, it's not even five, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could call Renekton a good card or a decent All right, one. I'd give it. I'd, I'd give it to Renekton. I'd give it to Renekton. Yeah. I really want Talia to be a good card, but I don't think she's there yet. Not just. Yet. I played. I I played Talia in the Swiss, and it was uh, it was definitely a bit of a struggle. Hey, don't kill my dreams. I still have my dreams of playing Funsmith with Talia. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Shifting a bit back to the tournament, though, because this was a region lock tournament, and what would be your tips towards people that are preparing for region lock? Because seasonals are coming, and we have all these tournaments as opportunities. Um, I think to prepare. you mean I think you mean riot lock. Uh, riot I lock. brought I brought two Ionia decks. This was definitely a riot lock. Riot lock. <laughs> so what would be your um, tips? My my tips for people who are preparing for the seasonal right now, and this is going to sound a little bit silly. Uh, but don't. Um, the next the next patch is going to be in two weeks. The odds that the meta is going to hard shift are almost 100%. Um, if you want to be preparing for some of the smaller tournaments that we're hanging out in, I love those. That's great. Uh, and my tips are, uh, my biggest one is look toward the five pillars of the metagame and find one that you're going to soft target and one that you're going to ban. Uh, and the five pillars for me are TF Fizz, Fiora Shen, Lee Sin, um, Trundle Watcher, and Targon Piles. I include like all of the random Aphelios nonsense in that one. 
And I think a really a really good way to think about trying to make a lineup is figure out which of those you think is going to be the most popular and find one of those that you want to target and one that you're planning to ban out. All right, that's some good advice. And what do you think was the best trait of yours that made you push through all this top 32, make it to the final and win the game? Uh, of mine or of the lineup? Of yours. <laughs> Of yours, we discussed about the lineup. Let's let's um, see what Jordan has special. What Jordan has in store. Well, <laughs> for for me, it's mindset, right? Um, and anyone who's uh, anyone who's been on my stream sees the uh, sees the quote that I put there literally every single day. It's not about winning; it's about playing a beautiful game. And if you think about it that way, if you think about no matter what's going on, I'm always going to try to play my best game. I'm going to try to play as close to optimally and as beautifully as possible, then that will give you the best chance to win. And if you're focused on winning too much, then it's really easy to have one thing go wrong and tilt off and miss playing to your outs. And if you're going to play at the top level, you have to get every percentage point that you have. Yeah, because we see a lot of people that just pick up a loss and then their entire mentality shifts, they start making misplays, they don't focus on the game, they, they tap into that loser's mentality, but if you are going in with the feeling that, alright, fun is my actual reward, if I'm winning something that's along the way, that shifts the things entirely. <laughs> It's, uh, it's not even that fun is my reward, right? Because I think that's a little understating it. It's that my reward is to know that I was at my best. And as long as I'm at my best, then that's what I care about. And that's what will lead to the victories anyway. Wise words from a champion. Before we actually close it out, if you had anyone that helped you prepare, of course, TMM helped you prepare because otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> we won't be at him. But if anyone else helped you along the way and you want to shout them, uh, shout them out if you want to tell people who supported you along the way, this is the time to show them some recognition. Uh, sure. Um, most, mostly I ended up practicing with TMM for this one. I have a couple of other people I practice with sometimes, but it wasn't really for Lorga. Um, but I will give a quick shout out to someone who doesn't get mentioned enough, but is a great tech builder and a great deck builder in our community. Uh, MTuck, actually, I had some good discussions with about uh, lineups and decks in the format in general. Uh, he is an absolute boss, and I appreciate him. Awesome. And we are glad to finally have you around. And this is my personal hope that we are going to have you around more. Because you are a damn good player, making top cuts every time. You deserve <sighs> more. You deserve more, my friend. <laughs> I'll do my best, buddy. All right, thank you guys for watching and we're going to come around with another interview probably in the next few days. So see you around guys.